According to Fizz.org, humans have been sleeping on beds for 200,000 years. I don't know about you, but we've got a bit of a trend here. But what happens when people stop buying as much bedding? You get a business with a slowly slowly shrinking stock price because almost 40% of its revenue is tied to sacks, racks, cribs, and pads. What's up? I'm Russ, and I've held this dividend king since March 13th, 2020, and I'm about ready to chalk this one up as a beginner error for blindly buying a dividend king and assuming that was largely safe and the share price would hold up. A dividend king is a stock that's raised its dividend for at least 50 consecutive years. Now, late Leggett and Platt are 141 years old and a leading supplier of bedding components and private label finished goods, automotive seat comfort and convenience systems, home and work furniture components, geo components, flooring underlayment, hydraulic cylinders for material handling and heavy construction applications, and aerospace tubing and fabricated assemblies. I hate to say it, but I'm a little bit dismayed because I think they're kind of subconsciously prepping us for a dividend cut because on that IR page while they're telling us investors what we appreciate them for they seem to have forgotten to mention that they pay a dividend they've raised for 52 years in their March 2024 update the dividend is not mentioned on the first page called leg it at a glance even though they mentioned that they have a long history of strong cash generation to support investment in our business and shareholder returns. However, check this out, their November 2023 presentation just four months ago on page three pointed out 52 years of consecutive annual dividend increases and they've been paying dividends as the second cash priority and on yet another slide they highlight their dividend growth and status as a dividend. And King. Now this brings us to the latest spring 2024 investor presentation where on page 11 they first mention a dividend saying that cash flow has exceeded capital expenditures and dividends in 34 of the last 35 years and then the next mention was on slide 41 where they lamely pointed out that solid cash flow generation is used for dividends and buybacks and then dividends were only mentioned twice more once in the uses of cash flow slide and then on the cash flow details slide. I mean, that is weak. Dividend is pretty much only mentioned passingly, almost as an afterthought, and there's no mention, no word at all about their dividend king status. So what about their full year earnings call from February? I mean, it doesn't get any better because Leggett CEO Jay Mitchell Doloff said in his prepared remarks, quote, in connection with the restructuring plan, we stepped away from our total shareholder return return goal and financial targets, including revenue growth, EBIT margin, and dividend payout ratio. So they've restructured the business, but now they're going to have to step away from their dividend payout ratio. But finally, after CEO Doloff did not mention dividend raises or his dividend kingdom, their CFO won Mr. Benny Burns in the second paragraph of his prepared remarks when talking about the significant uses for their cash said, quote, 239 million for dividend payments, extending our record of consecutive annual dividend increases to 52 years. And when Benny Burns talked about their focus, it seemed that their priorities for an anticipated weak residential market are maintaining their investment grade credit rating, managing debt leverage, investing in the business for future growth, and lastly, the dividend track record. Keep that in your mind about the dividend being the last on their priorities. Check out what Simply Safe Dividends shared in their dividend safety downgrade post about Leggett and Platt that each 2023 presentation slide deck mentioned funding for the dividend, while in their 2024 presentation, they somehow forgot to mention funding for the dividend. That's likely because their earnings per share payout ratio is way over 100% when it has yet to be over 80% in the last 10 years, but the dividend is paid out of the free cash flow, which right now is still under 100% and pretty reasonable. But still, the lack of recent dividend commitment and sparse mention of the dividend on the website and 
The presentation slide decks has me quite concerned. I mean, the stock is way down since its highs in 2021, and I think the market is pretty much priced in a dividend cut. So if they do cut that dividend, I don't think the stock is going to fall that much further. Now, I would love to blame it on the Fed that their interest rate raising is what really started this downturn of Lake and Platt, but they didn't start raising interest rates till right here, March of 2022. And as you can see, Leggett and Platt had been falling already from their high. May 14th of 2021, it has just been all downhill. And as of this recording, we're currently at $19.33. This is awful. Now, Simply Safe Dividends did downgrade them from 50 borderline safe all the way to 40 unsafe. They show this chart about home ownership, existing home sales has fallen off a cliff. So obviously people aren't gonna be buying and redoing their homes and upgrading them and things like that. So this has had a direct impact on Leggett and Platt's business. So Simply Safe does give them that 40 unsafe dividend safety score. And as for us, this is a big old bucket of yuck down 44 0.3%. I keep thinking it's going to turn, it's going to bottom out, it's going to come back, and it just has not. We have 100 shares with a cost of $34.68 per share. Hey, yield on cost, 5.31%, but that's no bueno because you could just walk into Lake and Platt in the stock market right now and get a 9.5% yield on cost, assuming that they're not going to cut that. They have a 6% 20-year CAGR on that dividend. Again, they've been growing it for 52 years. They last raised it 4.5% in May of 2023. By the time you view this video, March 14th will have passed. That's when they go ex-dividend, but they're currently paying $1.80 four cents per share annually and that dividend yield ladies and gentlemen should tell you something is probably not right with the business when their dividend yield is 119 percent above the five-year average of 4.34 percent this has got red flag written all over it the free cash flow payout ratio i think is more important and they did go over 100 percent in 2021, it was 137%, but it came back down. Kind of not too bad where it's at right now, but if their free cash flow keeps deteriorating, then that is going to push the free cash flow payout ratio well up over 100%. Now, it is a cyclical business, and this is something I didn't really think about looking at too hard when I got invested in Leggett and Platt, but their free cash flow per share was $2.04 in 2014. Last 12 months, $2.81. It's gone nowhere. Earnings per share, even a worse story. $1.78 of earnings per share in 2014. Currently, $1.39. Now, it has tailed off after going higher, but still, this is what you don't want to see in a business that you're invested in. Shares outstanding. They've kind of hit the pause button on buying them back. 136 million shares outstanding. But look at the story with their total sales very similar to earnings per share and free cash flow. $3.78 billion in 2014, $4.73 billion. It's just not gone up into the right enough like we like to see. The four main margins that we look at, we like to see the large margins. These are large margins. The large margins were in the past and they've been deteriorating pretty, pretty fiercely. So all the margins are being compressed and their net debt, 58% of capital, not Horrible, but that interest coverage ratio is pretty low. Now there's a saying on Wall Street that says the higher the yield, the higher the risk. Some businesses like BDCs, like our Main Street Capital and our Aries Capital are built to pay out really high yields. Leggett and Platt is not built to do that. I really think they're treading water and they're probably hoping to see a big boost in existing home sales from rate cuts. But when those two things aren't happening fast enough, I think they're preparing themselves for a dividend cut, which is why they've pretty much removed any talk of being a dividend king, their dividend increases, the dividend track record. It's mostly just kind of like, yeah, we kind of pay a dividend uh, around here. So it's a really strange thing and it's got my spidey senses way up. We always say, 
that the survival of the business is goal number one and that dividend will be cut. It's not a guarantee. It's not something that your grandma gives you. It's not from your Uncle Johnny. It's a gift every 90 days. That dividend is at the discretion of the board and if the company's in trouble, that baby's going to be cut. So please share your thoughts on this stock in the comments below. It really does help the community. We want to hear about it. If you were helped by this video, hit that thumbs up button and let us know what you think about Leggett and Platt. Would you invest in them? Do you think they're going to cut the dividend? Do you think there's some shenanigans going on with them all of a sudden happening to forget mentioning about the Dividend King and how they raised that dividend? But if you'd like to see 10 more good dividend growth stocks in this floating little box right here next to my head. Click on that and I'll tell you all about them there.